Declare daily. Thanks, Kian Corla. Um, Minister, I think you know it's been a very long road in the quest for justice for the people in the gallery here today who've carried with them over a lifetime the damage that was done to them by this state. And I, like the other deputies, want to acknowledge that these people, as far as I'm concerned, are giants for their peers. They're true survivors in the real meaning of the word for their brothers and sisters, their mothers, and those who probably didn't make it this far. And for these people, there's a real hope that this is going to be the beginning of the end. Of course, it'll never undo the damage that was done or take it back, but we can acknowledge it, we can address it and learn from it. And in that sense, I think this project really is only the end of the beginning, because what happens next is actually the critical test of whether we're at an historic juncture or we're not. Now, I think there's a right way of doing things and a wrong way of doing things. And yesterday, when Deputy O'Sullivan was questioning the Taoiseach about unresolved issues in relation to the Magdalen laundries, I felt he talked around it too much. He tried to justify things by saying, but sure, look, we're the first government who ever looked at this 60-year-old uh, crisis. Didn't we have the McAleese report? Uh, haven't we been listening carefully? But by even him saying that, he was proven that he actually hadn't been listening carefully because the Justice for the Magdalens have made the point very well that the McAleese report was very narrow in its remit. Many of the issues that those women need addressed still have to be addressed because that inquiry didn't investigate the uh, abuse. It didn't deal with burials and so on. Now, whether this commission of inquiry is going to deal with these issues or not, I don't know. I do note that the Justice for Magdalens have said they've had concerns, but they are going to give evidence at the Confidential Committee. And I particularly note that the Minister has said and explained very well that the terms of reference are flexible and ca can be capable of being expanded. And, and I actually accept that to a point. But, you know, it is true to say we should look at this project and you shouldn't come up with the end before you start. You've got to inform the process and that's what the first part is. And that's a valid argument. But you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to know that the Magdalen Laundries and the 10 institutions that are uh, outstanding, that are included in the amendments, are going to turn up in this because they were part of the network that dealt with women and girls who were, had babies outside of marriage. So they're going to end up there. And I think on that basis, if we were really listening, we should include them now, because if the Commission is going to be what the Minister says it will be, we'll be dealing with them anyway. And I, I think that would be an important acknowledgement, and I'd appeal to the Minister to deal with that. I think the Commission is a tribute to a lot of the work the Minister has done on this. Uh, and it does have the potential to be a hugely important body of work. I think the experts who've been assembled, like Professor Mary Daly, is uh, unrivaled actually in her field and can play a huge role in terms of delivering a very important social project on the history of women who had children outside wedlock. But there's two dangers in that. And the first one is by spending a lot of time on history, that we'll use history as a cover to justify or legitimise bad behaviour that no history could ever condone. Because while we can say uh, it was a sign of the times, attitudes are different now, that's true. But it's only one side of the occasion. Uh, what, people were more in awe of the Catholic hierarchy. Women had less choices economically in terms of raising children. It was a different time. But that's not an excuse for some of the torture and cruelty that was perpetrated by individuals in those institutions. And when we look at history and say that we're all to blame, society is to blame, everybody is to blame, sometimes that means nobody is to blame. And people don't get the justice that they deserve. And I think we have to factor that into the equation as well. I think we have to recognise that it's not that long ago either. All of these things are relative, of course, but when we talk about the hugely offensive term of rehabilitation for women in these cases, we talk about mother and baby homes when everybody knows a woman went in, a baby didn't come out with that woman in most cases. The baby either didn't make it or they ended up the hands 
because of uh, somebody either claiming to be their natural parents or somebody that they were adopted to, often against the wishes of that mother in the first place. And these issues need to be resolved. Now, I echo the concerns, I don't have time, uh, about the adoption issue, which is a huge body of work that needs to be addressed. Whether this Commission does it or not, I don't know, but it needs to be addressed. Minister, I think that the people have been hugely hurt and damaged by this. They've placed their trust in you, which is an incredibly big responsibility because their trust is precious. It's been abused and betrayed many times by people in this state. They can't afford to have it abused again.